hello everyone. Uh, myself, uh, Samir Shukla. I'm having around uh, 12 years of experience into software design and development. Uh, mostly my experience is on the backend side, especially on the microservices world, as well as on the data side. Uh, currently, I'm working as a lead engineer. Uh, and uh, apart from that, I am currently writing a book on Python known as Pragmatic Python. Uh, which will be uh, published very soon. And today I'll be presenting uh, in front of you, uh, like my experience with Apache Airflow uh, and the use case uh, around it. So I'll just begin uh, with the use case walkthrough. So basically, uh, am I audible to everyone? Yes, yes, we can see your screen. Yeah. Sure. So basically uh, the scenario was, uh, like around uh, one year back, I was working for a for a railroad organization. It's the biggest railroad company in the North America. And what they have done is they have acquired another railroad. So we were supposed to migrate the data from the acquired railroad to us. So that's where we have basically, you know, uh, used Apache Airflow for the automation purposes. So the scenario is the, the railroad, what uh, the company acquired, they were running on a very old system on SAP and mainframes. So what it does is basically it collects the information of events. So there are various events which uh, which works in the in the railroad industry. So for example, every locomotive has a GPS installed. So that GPS basically publishes an event every two minutes, stating where is the location of a train right now, what kind of train it is, train types, right? information about the events station state every like in the united states we have two two regions north and south each region has various divisions divisions has various subdivisions subdivisions contains the information about the station and state so that kind of an location information we were supposed to migrate from from company b to our system so that information will be given to us via sap system because uh, their database is of course not exposed to us so what sap system does is it basically collects the information of uh, like they have of course their own database but sap system uh, gives us that flat file in the form of excel sheet uh, to a cloud uh, uh, like bucket gcp bucket and from there our pipeline basically starts and after further processing it basically generates another set of csvs for our system to basically import the data. Now, as I mentioned, uh, that there are uh, various, uh, this the, the flat file, what we receive, it contains very sparse information. Each Excel sheet has, you know, various uh, sub sheets inside it. I can show you the dummy data afterwards. So we have to basically, you know, apply the joins on the various sheets, get the information up after applying the business logic. There are various set of business logic has been given to us like, you know, fetch only the GPS information. Don't fetch another event information. Fetch the data, which is which is valid, you know, last 10 years information, because this particular SAP system, it was giving us uh, the data, whatever they have, it was it was simply dumping us uh, that everything to us. So we have to filter out the data and get the most relevant, relevant information, which is useful for us. And then only we basically generate after applying all the filtering and everything, we generate the another set of CSVs for our SAP system to consume. So this is the entire flow. Now I'll go with the pipeline architecture. So as I mentioned, the SAP system, it gives us a flat file. The security team takes that flat file, pushes to a cloud, uh, like, you know, uh, GCS. From there are pipeline triggers. Our pipeline used to run once in a day uh, at one specific time as soon as uh, the file comes onto the bucket and the time reaches the our pipeline basically triggers the first step was to basically download the flat file from the gcs we were using pandas along with numpy and some other python based libraries for the transformation applying the business logic purposes so of course i cannot give this flat file completely that excel file to our pandas program to consume because the the file size was somewhere between one gig to five gig 
So we just cannot give that entire flat file for the pandas to basically apply the business logic. So our second step within the pipeline was to basically convert the Excel. As I mentioned that one Excel has various subsheets inside it. So we basically create the individual CSVs out of it. Then we feed that CSV to our pandas program after applying all the business logic, because we have, uh, you know, invested most of our time in applying the business logic because working on Airflow, as you all know, is pretty simple. You know, in one or two days, you will be up and running with Apache Airflow. So we have invested most of our time in the business logic portion. Once the business logic has been successful, we upload the file to the to another uh, uh, bucket. And then when the processing is over, we send in status email. So this is the happy pass scenario. Now, in case of failures, so for example, let's say uh, we have made some mistake in the business logic transformation or some kind of an error happened. The only thing uh, what we were doing is we were sending an email uh, with the log information that, you know, this particular task has been failed and we cannot process further. But we were unable to automate that uh, process itself. So we have to basically a manual intervention is required. So whenever in case of any failure happens, we have written uh, one script and then we basically move the flat file once again to the to the bucket for our processing to start. And we have basically it's a manual process. So we invoke uh, the DAG once again manually. So this is the entire pipeline structure in front of you. And this is the folder structure. When I have basically uh, worked on this particular architecture, we were um, uh, we have created this solution only on our uh, on our machines. We were not on cloud at that point in time. So what happens was, as I mentioned, uh, the very first step of downloading the file from GCS to local. So that particular file comes in over here with the name file underscore download. And then once we apply the step number two of basically converting the Excel to the multiple individual CSVs, we move that specific file from this folder to the input CSV folder. And from here, the, the Excel will be converted to the individual CSVs. And then after applying the transformation, the step number three, all the files and the result, the output files, you know, after applying all the business logic and everything, the output file will come to the process CSV folder. And from there, we basically publish the result, the output CSVs to the GCS. So, uh, so far, so good. Am I going too fast? Okay. Now, uh, I will try to basically uh, run a demo in front of you. Uh, so, this is the output bucket. This is the input bucket. Now, this input bucket is our step number one from where this particular Excel file will be downloaded. And after applying the, after following the DAG, the result output CSVs will be uploaded to this particular um, another bucket. And this is the data pipeline. As I mentioned, uh, pipeline is fairly simple. There is not much complexities are there because this is what we were supposed to do. So as I mentioned, this is the first step. Uh, which will be download the file from GCS to the local folder, applying the transfer, applying, converting the Excel to the individual CSVs, applying the business logic, uploading to the GCS and sending in a status email. So first I will basically execute an happy pass scenario in front of you all. I'll manually trigger the DAG. So, yeah, as you can see, the step number one has been successful. The green uh, is showing like that. Then step two is in execution. That is also successful. Now step number three is running. Step number four. And this is sending in a status email. Now this is also successful. I'll go and check the email. If you see, uh, this is the email which basically uh, mentions that the pipeline is, is successfully completed. Now, what I'll do is uh, I'll basically 
try to run an, another scenario, which is basically, you know, um, running an uh, error scenario. So uh, I will make some mistake deliberately to basically uh, enforcing that the task to, uh, to fail, basically. I'll refresh my tag and uh, execute it once again. So it should fail in this step. Okay, looks like it is not refreshed. Yeah, it is failed. As I'm deliberately make the code changes, now I'll uh, refresh it. So this is the Airflow alert, which basically specifies that you know uh, this particular uh, DAG ID, sorry, task ID has been failed. This is the log link where I can go and check what is the issue with the with the log. I mean, with the task. So this is the failure scenario in front of you all. Uh, I'm running everything on my Windows machine, but uh, in, in 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 our production system, everything was running on on Docker uh, in the Linux servers because we were not at, on the cloud at that point in time. So with this architecture, uh, so far uh, because I have already left that organization, but. Um, by the time I was there, we have uh, processed uh, successfully uh, around 100 plus files, and we have migrated almost uh, 400 to 500 gig of data with this architecture. And uh, uh, yeah, so that's it. And each file size, as I mentioned, uh, was between one to five gig. Now I'll go back to my presentation. Uh, if you have any doubt, we will uh, discuss it later. So this is the demo. Um, of the pipeline architecture. Now, enhancements. What enhancements uh, we have done so far? So I will I would like to showcase my uh, code also to you all. So this is the simple uh, tag. And as you can see, everything over here is in Python operator because we were not uh, very well versed at that point in time with, the, uh, with Airflow. So we have used uh, the Python operator and we have used Python storage library for uh, uh, GCS operations. So what we have done is uh, uh, like, these were, the, these were the stories what I have created before I left the organization that we have moved a Python operator to GCS to local. For uploading the file, we were supposed to change it from local to GCS, move completely to Cloud Composer. As you have seen that I was sending the status email, there is another, uh, like we were using Slack for a, our internal communication. So we were also supposed to integrate Slack API post uh, operator. Uh, I have mentioned that uh, we were unable to figure out the automation process in case of any failures because everything was manual. So at the moment, like if sometime we receive a failure email, we have to basically manually go execute our script. So we were uh, you know, uh, supposed to identify how we can automate that uh, in case of process is terminated or killed. So we were basically figuring it out uh, that way, we, and we were unable to achieve that at that point in time. So these were the enhancements uh, we have listed down. Um, this is what uh, I have achieved uh, so far with the Apache Airflow. Uh, in my uh, current architecture, and uh, so what next? Uh, at the moment, uh, basically, uh, in my current organization, I'm planning to remove all the basic uh, asynchronous process and cron, op cron operations with Airflow because we have a huge microservices architecture and there are various uh, cron operations and batch processing operations are going on. It's a Java shop. So we are planning to basically integrate it, uh, remove, automate those processes with Airflow. Uh, we also have a SAP system, so it deals with a lot of flat files and all. I'm planning to automate that as well. Uh, currently, I'm also authoring a book on Airflow. Uh, most likely in two months, I will like to publish it. So this is uh, where I'm going with the Airflow. And the last part of the sheet is the conclusion section. So my findings with Apache Airflow is that, you know, it is very easy to adopt. UI is excellent, as you all know. It helps in monitoring. Documentation is very good. You can, you know, one in one or two days, you will be up and running with Airflow. 
community is growing a lot of help is available nowadays uh, like even i uh, post a lot of uh, questions in the slack channel uh, on airflow and somebody or the other will, will always respond to me so this is uh, what the architecture i had and now before uh, finishing it off i would also like to showcase that uh, excel file as i have mentioned so this is this kind of excel file we were basically receiving uh, although for the dummy purposes i have only three flat files but uh, sorry three sheets but in reality it was around you know 10 or 15 um, sheets were there and also let's validate um, whether uh, the files were uploaded properly to the gcs or not so as you have seen it was before empty Looks like the entire folder I have uh, structured was uploaded. And this is the output CSV, which has been uploaded to the GCS. Uh, yeah, so that's about it. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, our uh, pipeline architecture was fairly simple. And it has been uh, made much more simpler by the simplicity of Airflow. So. That's about it.